so I have <laughs> trained this BBC at least four times since yesterday. And it's, um, and I'm in the process of doing it because I wanted to talk about refuge and where I am with the Nundra. But every time I did, Geshele came up into my mind. Since November 7th, I can honestly say there probably hasn't been a day where I have not thought of him. And so I decided, okay, if Geshele's going to be <laughs> up and about my mind, well, how can he teach me? How can he teach me to let go of the appearance of that particular life? And how can I, you know, integrate that into my refuge? So, um, I mean, one of the things that I have that kind of got blown up in the water when he disappeared on the 7th was my need for predictability, my need for certainty that things are going to go the way I want, the way I plan. I, community, I hate surprises, all right? <laughs> That's one of the things that I really struggle with is being surprised. And so I could really hear Geshe-la saying, you know, sem ke -la. Things that come together will separate. Death is certain. The time of death is uncertain. It happens to even the best of us, even us Geshis, we have to die. Now, if you don't want things to separate from you, and you don't want to lose anybody, turn your mind totally to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. That you will, the only way you will separate from the three jewels is if you walk away. It doesn't come from the Buddha's side at all. And I think it was maybe about two weeks after we'd done almost everything that we could do to find him, we had that Zoom call with Venerable where she said, it's time to turn your mind to the retreat. Everything will be taken care of. You know, we have qualified people. Keep looking. We've done everything we can do from our side. I can't tell you when she said that, that was one of the kindest, most profound things I've ever heard my teacher say. Turn your mind into retreat. And so for that month, I thought, well, I had said this a few, I think two BBCs ago, that I spent the first one just doing the Buddha Jewel, just really submersing myself into looking at whatever I could find about the qualities of the Buddha. Why I would be totally entrusting him, that I would take total safe direction with him. And it, I can't do it with my, even my teachers. Venerable has said that time and time again. If you get hooked onto the personality of your teachers, when they die, you're going to have a problem. And Geshe gave me that teaching as well, because I just, I love the, I love the karmic appearance, you know, small and compact, you know, moves through space like a, like a, a little antelope, you know, or not, not an antelope, he was, he was slower than that, maybe, <laughs> maybe a little, I don't know, so a little rabbit, a little rabbit, you know, and so I was like, gosh, I can't, I, I get too attached to the personality and the personas of my teachers. And so here I am looking at the, the Buddha jewel and saying, okay. Buddhahood, this is what happens. This is the kind of body you have. These are the kind of kayas you can emanate, you can manifest. And to see those good qualities, it really helped me to bring my mind, settle down, and just feel that I was being held by the Buddha. You know, because I, I felt such a sense of loss. I kept grasping. I kept grasping onto something or somebody. And so for that first month, I very much just let the Buddha hold me. And then we came up out of that into Vajrasattva retreat, which was just so lovely. And then on January 3rd, I bring Venerable home, and two hours later, we find Geshe's body. Okay, I'm still not over this yet. I'm not anywhere close to that. And so I, he says, you know, death samkila. Who do you think died? The appearance of this life, of this little monk, is so strong for you. And do you see the suffering it brings? Where is geshe -la? I'm not here. I don't exist as I appeared. And even in your mind, I don't exist as I seem to appear. You're bringing so much suffering to yourself. It's not helpful. Once again, 
if you want to not suffer and hold on to something that is true and real for you, it's the three jewels that will do that. I can't do that for you. And so we went into the Vinaya course, which was just so wonderful. And doing the, the three jewels, and I was just about to segue into the Dharma jewel. And the Dharma jewel is the scriptural Dharma, and it's also the realized Dharma. And I've been looking at that whole course and saying, this was the scriptural Dharma of the Vinaya, the Pratimoksha Sutra, an aspect of the Dharma jewel, which is the scriptural Dharma. And I kept thinking, may this become maybe cooperative conditions at this point in my life and our lives to be able to actualize the perfection of ethical conduct in some future life. Because the true paths is what we're going for. And right now where we are, we can just sort of similitude that. And so I really, you know, capturing the Dharma jewel in my mind in that way. And so then we went, I mean, there was like two days, I think, between the Vinaya course and the puja for Geshe-la. And then we had his family come, the Drepung monks come, and we did the memorial. And it was like the last, this big, big last piece was Venerable Sanke Kadra going and requesting some ashes from the funeral home. And we come back with this little box with a bag in it. And Geshe is just laughing inside my mind. He's just laughing. He says, see, I'm not anything as I appeared. This is what happens to the form. When the mind leaves, this is, this is as simple as it gets. And I thought about Venerable's teaching on the fundamental clear light. I was thinking about, you know, the, the continuity of that specific I, Geshe-la, that went through a generalized somewhere, and he probably is, or whatever that mental continuum, that fundamental clear light is now being embodied in another specific I. And knowing in my heart in some way that, he, that, that there will be great benefit for those who come in, in touch with that specific I. I have that kind of in my heart, in a, in a, it's not a logical reason kind of thing, but I really make that deep, deep prayer and to meet him in future lives. And so to see that, to just see it go down to just, just that, you know, that he had been imputed by our minds, dependent upon the causes, the conditions, the parts, the body, the smile, the precise wisdom, the, the voice, the speech, all mere imputations. And so through the course of this, just these the last two months, is that my whole thinking about him, he still comes up in my mind almost every day, but there's so much of a lightness there. There's so much of a playfulness. There's so much of a, I'm not, I'm not grasping so much into the, into the past, and I'm certainly not, I'm trying very hard not to grasp into the future, what we're not going to have. You know, that's part of Venerable says the grief process is accepting the fact that things are not going to turn out the way you had hoped. And being able to work my way through that. And so for this next month, I'm really wanting to really delve into the Dharma Jewel, which is the third and fourth noble truth, true cessation and true paths. And what's very interesting, when I'm still continuing to think about Geshe what he'd say about the four jewels, the four noble truths, is that in the essence of refined gold, Venable said very clearly, she said, you know, it's so much more accurate to say, to make them plural. It's not true dukkha, it's true dukkhas, because there are so many forms of dukkha. True origins, two of them, you know, the self-grasping ignorance and then the, the ignorance that doesn't believe in the functioning of karma. True cessations, of which there are many, starting with the, the realization of emptiness on the path of seeing. And then there are true a plethora of true paths. The entire path is true paths. So when I saw that written down in this transcription said, it just opened up the whole possibility of the dependent arising of this whole process. It's not so you know, hard and fast, true dukkha, one thing. Hard and fast, true origin, one thing. One true cessation, one true path. It's a whole dependent arising of how these things come about and how they change. And that the true cessations result when the certain defilements are cleansed from the mind at the root. 
as we actualize the true paths. I find once again the progression, the dependent of rising of how the, actual, uh, the actualization of true paths brings true cessation, and we will have many, 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 many of them. And so I was sitting with this the other morning saying, what would it be like once and for all to eliminate the self-grasping ignorance? And Venerable Seppel said this, someone alluded to this in her teaching this morning. If, you, if we were free of the self-grasping ignorance, the self-centered thought, the afflictions, the karma that have terrorized us, threatened our peace, paralyzed us, kept us in samsara since beginningless time, when we are ready at the path of seeing to begin to eliminate at the root so they do not appear ever again. Because there's not a lot in the Lam Rim and the Geshe Soap, but you don't have a lot on the Dharma Jewel because one of them is an attainment. <laughs> it's, a, you know, it, it's, it's the absence of these adventitious defilements. It's really letting go at the root. So there's, there's a lot on true paths, but there's not a lot on true cessations per se in the in the commentaries, at least Geshe's opus does it. And that the and that it's gotten it's gotten me more excited about emptiness, because this is it. Geshe's opus says, you know, as ordinary beings, we don't have true cessations, we don't have true paths until we reach the path of seeing. But he said, within this context, anything that we practice, anything that we integrate to be able to transform our minds is dharma. You know, it's not the dharma jewel, but it is the dharma, and it's getting us in that direction. And so when I was thinking about Yeshala the other day, or maybe yesterday, there was just this, well, it's the emptiness of inherent existence. I mean, I've been doing this chapter nine, transcribing these teachings he gave, and he keeps saying, this takes time, this is hard, this is not easy. This takes some doing. This takes some work. But from the path of seeing onward, the liberation, the awakening, the possibility, the potential, the cleansing of the mind, it has got me in a, in a relationship to my refuge and to the Four Noble Truths that I never had before. And I would like to think, because I've had to process this loss, to be able to, to think about, and I will be thinking about for a long time, everything that not just Geshla, but Venerable, and Venerable Sangha Kadro, how they continue to teach us along this path so we can get to that place where true cessations can start to be attained. And, it's, and, and Lama Zopa, best cheerleader I've ever met, says, we can do this. It's not impossible. Let's do it. You're capable. Venerable says, don't be afraid of this. You can do this. And so that's kind of the courage that I have felt in my mind since I started thinking about you know, the whole process of this winter retreat, I think it's been one of the deepest retreats I've ever had just because I've had to go there to get through my processing of Geshe's death. And putting him in my meditations, talking me through some of this stuff has been extremely helpful. You know, that playful, thoughtful, gentle voice looking over his glasses at you. <laughs> you know, that gentle walk, that precision of being, of giving us the correct teaching at any given moment, whether we're sitting at the table or working in the forest or sitting, he's sitting up here at the table. That's, that is, that is the gift. That is the gift that he has given. I feel it very personally. I don't know about anybody else, but I feel a lightning in my heart that I haven't felt since November 7th. And so it might take a little bit longer, but it has given me a lot of faith in the reliability of the Buddha, the infallibility of the Dharma, and the preciousness of the Sangha. Our teachers are the great sages that have unpacked these beautiful Dharma jewels. So that's where I am right now. I'm looking forward to the next, last month. I will delve into the Sangha jewel and I'll see what comes up there. I'm sure Geshe is gonna have something to say about that too. <laughs>